In this series, we're going to go ahead and cover, at a high level, the animation system. We are not going to go into details on how the animation system works, or even create an animation system. But since we are using the third-person blueprint system, and it has animations built in, as well as basic locomotion, we probably want to cover how it works. So by animation, I mean the fact that our character is standing here. They are idle, and it's using an idle animation. And then when we walk, they are running. And then we slow down, and they will transition from an idle to a run. It also controls moving in all eight of our directions. Inside of our character itself, inside of the blueprint, we have various different controls. We have when we move with the gamepad, or the mouse, or the keyboard, and it's driving our character itself, and it's setting some values. We have a walk speed, and we have a rotation, and those are important. The walk speed determines basically if we're walking, not walking, idling, running. And then our rotation will determine which animation should be played based on our rotational direction. All this information is provided to us by the character. The character controls, the blueprint controls the input. The input, for example, here, if we turn with our mouse, we add turn to our pawn. If we look up with our mouse, we add look up to our pawn. If we jump, we tell our character to jump. And it's all these other various settings, moving forward, moving right, and things like that. The character movement just takes that input and does the appropriate things behind the scenes. That's what's nice about blueprints. It is code. There is code behind every single blueprint you see here. It just takes a whole bunch of words and converts into a nice pretty little box so we can make things more efficiently and less time consuming in my opinion. The character movement system, like I said, does all of this in the background. So when we tell it to add movement input, it's going to add the impulses. It's going to move our collision volumes. It's going to move us in whatever direction we tell it based on our input. But it's also going to do things such as adjust the speed, adjust if we're swimming or not, turn on the jump flag if we tell it to jump, tell it if we're in the air or not, and do a bunch of things behind the scenes. If we go into our animation folder, let me go ahead and close some of my other folders here. And we go into our mannequin and we go under animations, we're going to find our individual animations. Let me make this a little bit bigger and these a little smaller. There we go. These animations are just little clips. They're little clips created in the third party content creation software, Maya, Max, something like that. And it's just normal standard skeletal animation. If I open up my, my, let's go with walk, and we look at this, we're now going to see our animation window. And this window holds things such as, what does our skeleton look like and consist of? What does our mesh look like? What are some of the settings such as rotational values, if it uses physics, things like that? What are our animations? We have our little animation notification system here different types of tracks, how they affect our bones, any animation set up with our character and our skeleton. It's huge. It is extremely complex and linked together, which is why we're not going to cover it in this video. It is covered separately in its own sections. This video is just meant to show it an overview how everything connects together. So we have our skeleton. Our skeleton is created in the third party, brought in, and it's our individual parts of our character. We have things, our different bones connected together, controlling our animations. Our animations are basically movements on those bones, which we have here. The idle animation will move certain bones in certain ways and has certain lengths. We have things like walking, running, jumping, idling. You have things like smaller jump sections. See how we have an end, a start, and then we have a custom created one called a loop. 
our animation system is basically going to know when you start jumping. It's going to do our little start animation. Once the start animation is done, it's going to run our loop, so you're jumping. And then when you're done jumping, it's going to run the end, which is for when you land. So it connects all those together inside of our animation system, inside of our blend spaces, and our animations. Over here, we have two things. We have a blend space and an animation blueprint. The animation blueprint is the master controller for everything. It determines what you're doing and when you're doing it with animations. If we were to go to our event graph, you're going to find this, which doesn't look too bad. Basically, it's using blueprints. It's going to see if we actually have something we're controlling. If we do, figure out if we're falling, basically if we're jumping or not, and figure out what speed we're using when we are running or walking, or if we're just sitting there idle. So it's not that complicated. The more complicated part is when you start running into stuff like this, into your different blend spaces and your different graphs. If you look here, basically we come in, we determine if we're supposed to be idling or not, or running. Then we find our way back to the event graph, and then we determine if we're supposed to be jumping or not based on are we jumping. We determine if we're still in the air after we're jumping, if we should be doing our little flailing animation. And then we determine if we should be landing or not, and then it just loops in a circle. So like for example, if we're in the air, you see that motion, and when we land. So you can see, jump, idle, land. Jump, idle, land, and you can see when we adjust our speed, our character's slowly going to start moving. So in the case of a computer, where it's a an, uh, analog, where it's an on-off switch on our keyboard, we're, we're basically going to go from zero to max speed instantly. You're not going to have any transition. But if you're on a controller, where you have a adjustable speed, you might slowly ramp up. Now, if you noticed and remember when we went through animations, and we look at our walking. Our walking is one speed. Our running is one speed. And our idle is one speed. But you don't see the character go from walk to run immediately. Using our graph, it actually kind of blends between our idle to our walk to our run really smoothly. And it's using that, it's doing that using a blend space. The blend space is this other option here. And basically, these are so fantastically awesome. It is, you define on a list, on a line in this case, animations. In this case, I have idle, walk, and run. And then I say, okay, what are the values between? Between here and here are going to be, looks like 100. Zero is going to run idle, 100 is going to run walk. And then up here at 375, it is run. So if my number is, let's say, 30, we're going to get a little bit of a blending between idle and walking. As it gets up to 75, 100 in this case, 90, 95 maybe? I can't really tell for sure what that is. Uh, 93.75. As we get up to that speed, now it's going to transition into our walk. And then as we get slowly faster, it transitions up to our run. And as you notice, it does everything smoothly. And it does that because our animations and our skeleton are all using the same bone structure. So it knows that the difference between here and here means your arm may be in a certain position. And it's going to smoothly run it. The nice part about this is you can actually apply it in not only 2D up and down, but 3D. So you can actually drive things like your character turning in a circle or stepping backwards. There's other animations that you can do for much more complex systems. And it's all built into this animation system here. And as you can see, it's not really too bad. We, we get our information every frame. It's updated. Then it runs it through our graph itself. If I can get this stupid, here we go. The state machine and the state machine just determines, okay, what's our speed? Determine for idling or running. And if we're in the air and jumping, determine what part of jumping and in air we are. And as you saw, 
it just it'll transition smoothly between everything. Doesn't matter what speed I'm at, doesn't matter what I'm doing. It just does it. And all the stuff regarding in air, like I mentioned earlier, it gets the in air. If we go back to our event graph, all it's doing is saying, hey, character, let me talk to your movement component. And the movement component is this right here that was created because we're a character. It's going, hey, movement component, are you falling? If you're falling, we're going to go ahead and say, yes, you're in the air. And if you're not falling, we're going to go ahead and say, no, you're not in the air. And then it goes, hey, movement component, what's your velocity right now? Okay, well, let me figure out what the vector is, and I'll use that to set my speed. And all that comes for free, all from our nice little character movement component by simply using it. That is pretty much going to wrap up our animation system. Like I said, this is an overview. There's a lot of other really cool things in here. You could add bones, for example, and then add in weapons really simply. And then the weapons will simply track automatically with your animations. You can easily add in more states, such as a crouching state or running state. Um, not a running state, a crouching state or a prone state or a death state. You could just simply have in here, we have our set in air. Well, what if one of these is health? Or we let's say we have in our character a variable called dead. Is dead. We'll make it is dead. And it's a Boolean. And all your animation blueprint does is go, okay, character, are you dead? And it's going to set yes or no. And let's say it turns into yes. Then in here, we have another one of these that we branch off and we call it dead. And if it's dead, then it's simply going to be one way is dead and it'll play our dead animation. That's it. That's how we can handle it. Now it'll automatically, when we trigger that is dead in our character, the animation system will know to play the is dead animation. Boom. You're dead. Really simple and handy. That is our animation system. After this, we're going to go ahead and start using blueprints. We're going to code in a button and a door and some sound effects. And we're going to make it where we can actually do something with a little bit of basic coding.